Trading Nut, episode 64. This guy's returns are astronomical, but in order to get those astronomical returns, he trades with an abnormally high risk for a fund manager. That's because he's found high probability. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than... I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax. Learn the process. Candlestick pattern trading is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up, traders? Welcome to another installment of the Trading Up Podcast. I'm your host, Cam Hawkins, and today we've got Andre Stewart back on the show. So he's been around for a long time, and you're going to hear why and why I've got him back on the show today. And in fact, it's a special kind of episode where we're going to be talking psychology, trading psychology. I know I don't do that many, but uh, th- this is one that is a great sort of lead in. And in fact, Andre has put together a little. Uh, special thing, you've got to listen to the end of the show, you're going to find out what he's put together, I haven't got it yet, so there's a high chance that by the time this goes live, because I haven't given him a lot of time, it's not going to be ready, but you're going to hear what it is at the end of the show, so keep listening for that, and uh, look, there's going to be more psychology, trading psychology related shows coming up, so I'm trying to line a few of those up, uh, along with more traders for you guys to obviously listen to, so guys, we've got this coming up in the show, now before we get into that, I just want to let you know that the funding page on the website. So if you're a trader, if you if you think you've got what it takes, but you haven't got the capital, and you're looking to basically leverage somebody else's money to trade with, um, with a little bit of an investment from your part, but not that much, then there's a funding page up on the tradingnut.com site where I've... I've updated it now, so there's quite a comparison table there where you're going to see all the different features and be able to pick one of three funding providers that I've partnered with and work out which one is the best fit for you. They've all got varying different um, approaches, and I'm sure you look through that and you'll be able to sort of find one that's a good fit. So guys, if you're thinking about that, you're thinking, I want to trade with other people's money, then head over there, tradingnut.com, or there should be a link in the link tree in the show notes in the description. Now, part of the trading that I'm doing is is automated trading. So robotic trading, uh, I run the Robot Traders Club. One of the robots is doing really well. We've we've managed to take a test account, a small test account of 100 bucks up to over 400. Uh, so the $100 deposit is now gone. It's all just uh, profit that's been traded here. And other members are just trading their own money, and I think they're doing well as well. Now, I, what I've decided to do is give a few more updates on Instagram. So if you guys are on my Instagram, um, I'm finding this easy enough to do is, if you know, I will post up the results uh, to keep you guys up to date of how this is going. So if you like the look of it, then you can message me and find out how you get access to it. It's not that simple, but um, yeah, you'll have to message me and find out. Right, so guys, what else? Last but not least, I think we're just going to get on with the show, but I do need to say the show is a little bit, uh, what's the word? rough and raw around the edges uh, halfway through the show. Andre jumps in the car, and <laughs> so we lose some connections here and there. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to cut them out, because it's quite funny, I think, just to have a listen. So, guys, I'll leave them in. Um, oh, maybe I'll cut some of them out. Who knows? If there's a big gap, I'll cut it out. Right, guys, here we go. Trading Psychology 101 with Andre Stewart. All right, folks, so we've got Andre Stewart back on the show again. You're probably wondering why this guy's coming back on the show so often. Now, if <laughs> If you haven't listened to the full 52 Traders, uh, which was my first podcast series, you'll, uh, you won't know that Andre actually came on the show as a, as a contestant in a challenge, and at that point in time, he could not trade. Well, he was, he was halfway there, I suppose, halfway there, and since then, the guy's gone on to, to do great things and become basically a full-time trader now. Um, astronomical trader in fact and we have you back on here today Andre to talk about trading psychology so welcome back to the show thanks for having me Cam look it's been a while eh it's been probably (laughs) quite a few months now I can't even remember it was definitely sometime in 2019 when we had you back on doing the Q&A's how how have things been Uh, things are great Cam I I really can't complain it's just working every day you know Uh, the pursuit of getting better Superb, superb. Now, 
I know trading psychology is something that's been banded around. I, I even think I did a, I was on a trading psychology podcast, which never got launched, I believe. So it's, and it's always the thing that everyone, especially newbies, tend to like, you know, dismiss and think that they're above it. But um, I know you have put together um, a whole bunch of information on your thoughts on trading psychology and I know your your story, maybe you can sort of recite yeah. your story again um, for the for the guys to start off the show was was a, obviously a breakthrough moment for you. And I suppose what we want to try and get out of today is give the guy give the listeners out there some potentials to have the breakthrough moments they need around the psychology aspect. So yeah, maybe start off by telling telling everyone your story and how you sort of psychologically got yourself through the mental barriers that do hold back most traders. Yes, uh... <laughs> you remember the twenty dollar bill story, Kim? <laughs> yeah, that's the one I'm yeah. thinking of. <laughs> so you know, um, I had I long story short, I had got fired from a job, and you know, didn't I only had a little bit of money and all this other good stuff, and I was sitting at my table one night trading, and I was just losing money, hemorrhaging money, hand over fist, and that was the only thing that was on my mind: money 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 and i took this 20 dollar bill out of my wallet and yelled at it you're not going to control me anymore you sob you know every swear you can think of this 20 dollar bill freaking got it and it was at that point it clicked to me my issue is my emotional connection to money and that's big Right, because most people don't focus on what trading actually is, and it's just about money, lifestyle, just the crap that doesn't matter. When the only thing that really matters, as far as being a trader, is how you execute. The market doesn't give a crap about you, how you feel, how you look, nothing. Right, and that's another thing too is ego. Right, um, for me, I have it. I I have and still kind of do to an extent have an ego problem. And being able to admit that is one of the things that will help you kind of overcome any kind of freaking psychological barriers you have, because we tend to think we're more important than we what we, what we really are. And one of the, I think one of the biggest things that talks about that is even people who who talk about market manipulation. It, it's it's dumb because again, it's ego. So. And so, do you want to do you want to dive back into that sort of time? Because I think I mean. It was a great story, the, the twenty dollars story, and uh, I think the, the first time you told it was even better. I was in tears, <laughs> and um, and then so do you want to? I mean, so you realised that money was, you know, you had an emotional connection to money. So having that sort of meltdown, <laughs> how do you? How did it? Did it break your emotional connection to money? Just this, the one in, instance, or does it sort of keep reappear, you know, rearing its ugly head? It will always kind of rear its ugly head. Um, but it, it over time, it just kind of dissipates, right? Because, you know, I don't believe in any of this crazy, mystical, magical, uh, out of this world kind of psychological trip. Like, don't hypnotize me. I don't need any of that tr- that junk, right? It's, it's a very individualized thing. So, you know, just being aware of how you feel when you're at the charts. And I've noticed, even with some of the people that I mentor, they trade with their profit and lost uh, down on MC4, MC5, whatever broker. They trade with their with, with showing their account balance. That like that's useless information to the market, right? And w- that was one of the things I got rid of because you know once I started coming into grips with with trading and even psychologically trading style, um, my trading style was kind of scalping because I wanted to make money in and out, in and out. That doesn't that doesn't freaking work. It works, but it's it's even scalping, which is more or less my emotional connection, the money, that FOMO, that fear of losing, right? But it it became okay when I lose. How do I take it? Do I take it as damn I lost money, or could I have actually avoided that loss, right? And what most people don't get is if you have a freaking thirty percent win rate. There's nowhere to go but up, or you could go down. But look at look at it as room to improvement. The gap between thirty and one hundred percent is seventy. 
I'd say you can you you can get at least sixty five to sixty percent better, right? And I, I I think it's those logical things that that I was missing, and I was scalping mainly because I wanted to make money fast, and it burns you out because yeah the money will come, but then what about your health, right? It's all it's balance, right? It's give and take, and I was definitely balanced more on the on the side of I want to make money and I want to make it now. I grew up poor. I didn't have anything. You know, um, like I literally grew up in the hood. Like I didn't have a damn thing. And that's hard to get over. Even now, like I am probably the cheapest person in the freaking world. Like if I don't need it, I won't buy it because I, so it, to some extent, I still operate out of the I used to be poor mentality. But that I use that to benefit me because I understand what what what, what money is worth. And I don't waste it. But there is still elements of that psychological connection to money because, hell, I used to be poor. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to go back to that. I don't want my kids to have to deal with that. And a lot of that, too, it stems back to childhood. Like, and, and I know there are people who have it worse. That's one of the things that keeps me grounded. Because I remember my mom used to cook us food. And I would sit here like, wow, she's not eating. Why the hell is she not eating? She was letting her kids eat before she ate, right? And those are the things that kind of stuck with me. And it's just like, damn, is shit really, excuse me, is it really that bad, right? And I I, I, I carried that for such a long time. Um, And, you know, when I started to make decent, I remember when I first hit six figures, you know, most people, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to tear up the club. I'm going to do this dumb, stupid stuff. You know what I did when I hit six figures? I I, I put what? the money away. I didn't have it. It doesn't exist. You withdrew it and, and put it in a, a savings account yeah, or something? Or... I, I moved it. It didn't exist. Well, and that and the IRS wanted their fucking cut. But anyway, um, it, you know, I just put it away. It doesn't exist. But still, even that is kind of me being emotionally connected to money because it's fear of losing it. So it's a double-edged sword. And so I suppose, like, the guys who are who are listening, I mean, I know, I, and I include myself in this, like, you know, how, how do you – what's the – is there an easy way to become aware of what your issues are? around around money it's funny because i i listen to or i you know i watch some people in in my chat rooms or other chat rooms and i see them like even i can now sort of see them talking and i can see that there's emotional connections to money um or or like other people that come through or even friends and stuff and you know you're at a barbecue and you can you can see i can now i now look at people and go that guy or that girl is uh, definitely got a connection to money, which is quite negative. So, is there is there a way that somebody can identify in themselves, as opposed to, I suppose, or you know, somebody else identifying it in them? Yeah, simple. How do you feel when you're at the charts, or 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 in anything? Your 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 decision making process, right? Like for me, it, like I say, yeah, it was that twenty dollar bill incident, but like there's simple things, right? Like. Excuse me. Um, when you're at the charts, you're like, oh, yeah, I could make 10K doing this. I could do right. Like people are always so um, I would say they're so eager to talk about their percentage returns and all this other stuff. Right. Um, excuse me. I know you're going to hear for a second. Um, people are always talking about just like percentage returns, growth on this, growth on that. My students are doing this and my students doing that and it's always connected to returns right that's cool and all Mm. but what's your risk what are you risking what's your defined risk right because and again trading is i've reversed it in my mind trading is not about how much money i can make it's about how much money i don't lose Right, and how do you how do you reverse that? How do you get that reversed in your mind every day? Because it, it is it's different every day, right? Because one day you might have a great one, and that works, and then the next day, 
I mean, what I find is if I have a winning day, the next day I'm like, damn, I had a winning day yesterday. I need to back that up. How is that going to... And then that's when I'll start to, like, you know, get the speed wobbles. Yeah, um, I got you. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I, I haven't. Sometimes it, sometimes I, I can get a good five days and the whole week's perfect. Other times I start going, oh, hang on a sec. This is look, looking too good. It's yeah. your relationship with risk, right? My my thought, my feeling on it is people are always kind of, and uh, by people I mean traders, traders are always infatuated with, uh, you know, the legends of trading, right? Like Paul Tudor Jones, uh, Steve Cohen, right? Like in, even even other, yeah. other private traders, right? Um, Paul Tudor Jones said something. He said... Simply, it's your relationship to risk, right? And then it becomes okay, risk to reward ratio, right? I think I still think that's the dumbest. Oh, I'm losing you here. Because you're telling me. Oh, you're driving. <laughs> you're driving somewhere? I am. Ah, uh, I just, uh, we had. Paul Tudor Jones, oh, Stephen so uh, people, Cohen, people, yeah. and then it was like it, it sounded like you were you were slowly dying. Oh, yeah. but, no, 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 um, no, no. It's it's, it's likely just the, zone, the whole zone thing. Um, no, I think people yeah. people are so, in, so so consumed about how they made their words because Steve, let's say Steve Cohen's a freaking legend in, in in the world of trading, right? Like this guy's returns are astronomical, but in order to get those astronomical returns, he trades with an abnormally high risk for a fund manager. That's because He's found high probability, right? And most, I think, most retail traders have not found high probability, and that's part that's part of the problem. But Paul Tudor Jones said something that's very, very interesting. It's all about the relations, the relationship to risk, and how yeah. and, and how do you interpret that? I think you interpret it how the hell you want to. I interpret it as you need to enter like risk to reward ratio is totally crap. It's crap. The market doesn't say, here's a two to one. The market's not telling you, if you want to make 100 pips, have a 30 pip stop, right? No, it's not telling you that. I think you look for opportunities to where you can have a 10 pip stop and a 100 pip, 100 pip uh, target. It's all about entering into a trade where the relationship between reward and risk heavily favors reward, heavily and a simple freaking tweak to do that is you enter as close to where you want your stop to be. Simple. Right. Right. I don't know if I answered your and question then how do you... around it, but yeah. yeah well, uh, I suppose you enter as close as where you want your stop to be. Now, does that mean, I suppose the question I've got is like, what if your setup hasn't completed at that point? You don't take is that you don't take the trade. Th- it okay. And so if you're um this is sort of veering off psychology, mm-hmm. but uh if you're so where would you put your stop then? If you're entering as close to where your stop would be, are you just putting it where your stop would normally be and just taking ultra low risk? No, because if you enter as close to where your stop wanna be, and again it, it's defined, it depends on what kind of trade here's the thing too. Psychologically, yeah. it depends on what kind of trader you are. I see it as when you're yeah. impatient, you should scalp. If you're somewhat patient, you should enter the trade. If you're a super patient person, you should swing trade. Right? It, it's psychological. It's a psychological. Chris Laurie, I get, I get this term from Chris Laurie. Chris, I love you. If you listen to this, you mean the world to me. It's your psychological profile. I have to, like Chris said, it's all about your psyche. Like, hey, Chris, what are you talking? You're just talking gibberish. Like, what do you mean? And then I started getting into into how I felt. And it's like, damn, Chris is right. Like I'm the I'm the dummy. The market the market knows I don't, right? And it's submitting to that. And it, and that's when it thought about like, oh, when I was impatient, I was scalping. As I learned and grew and developed, I started doing more intraday. And you and you see my progression, right? Um, yeah. And as I started outgrowing that and maturing. I became more of a position trader because, like, like I don't, I don't know how much to say without sounding like an arrogant jerk, but I literally caught the high of the year in New Zealand dollar, and I'm still holding it. But I waited for that trade, 
Like I waited, I waited and waited and waited, and it came all the. It came about seventy five percent back to my entry. I don't care. I'm holding it because I understand my own understanding of the market, right? And cool. Yeah. I know I can hold this with 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 a high degree of probability that it's going to go all the way down to where I think the target is. And it's actually damn near close to my target. Um, I haven't even looked. I haven't looked at. I haven't looked at the chart in like a week, so I don't know to be fair. But that's another thing too. Let let it go. <laughs> I watch Frozen too much with my kids, but you gotta let it go. <laughs> let it go. And, but it, it's true, right? Like you can't. You you don't move price. So why do you care? So uh, on that note, I mean, like, okay, there's a couple of things Let's I want go. to talk about. To, to go over because I think the rewind that guys because it was a really good point in there around the you know the fact that if you're impatient maybe scalping's better for you than than swing trading then as your patience sort of grows you can grow into longer term trading whereas not a lot of people look at it that way and I think that's where or even talk about that even other mentors don't talk about that and people sort of they might be impatient diving into like you know uh, long term trading. Mm-hmm. Uh, and or swing trading, and then they struggle. Yeah, yeah exactly. I and I think that's every that. Every single person in my been... group to define that. If you do, if you haven't defined that, don't message me. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, and I think look, I think that's been a big issue for me. And, and you know, um, I've asked over the you years, too, Cam, what kind of trader are you? You know, and I think yeah, and things I yeah, and I and I think I mean, I think I've gradually found myself there where i should be but i think over the over the years and look you know i've been with you for for a few years and way back in the beginning even you didn't know right you, you know you were you were still scalping when i was i was first learning off you but i suppose as you progress and um you know you i've sort of felt like oh maybe i should be doing this maybe i should be doing that and so the you know the reality is i think yeah i'm like i'm an impatient person trust me i'm probably at the hyper end of impatience and i just look at it from anything that i do and everything that mm-hmm. i do i'm you know i'm so i'm i'm so not patient about mm-hmm. stuff i i do something on to see immediate immediate results whatever it is um so yeah it's so i think that's where i've left that's where i'm at now and things have started to get a lot better because i'm i'm now trading like more of a scalper the um, sort of like a scalper in a way, but I do let things sort of run. Now, a couple of things. Yeah, fear of missing out, um, moving stop loss, revenge trading, and holding on to positions um, that, you know, when you're in profit and you're not going to, you know, freak out that it's going to come back and hit your stop loss or moving your stop to break even too, too early. So do you want to start off with FOMO and just sort of give a like a – an overview on how somebody can get around that and we might have even just touched on it i think fomo too is 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 part of the part of not defining what kind of trader you are i think it's that i i personally think it's that simple right because if if you're constantly having the fear of missing out you should probably take smaller moves right and so in and part of fomo too i think is the the trader has not defined their trading style. I think it's just that simple, right? Yeah. Because yep. as a trader, literally you are paid to wait. You don't it's 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 the exact opposite of the working world, right? You're paid to be productive. Well your product productivity as a trader is sitting on your hands. <laughs> it's crazy, is it? <laughs> it's so it's such a, a mindset shift for, for pretty much everyone on the planet. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I completely agree. The next one was um, on moving your stop loss. So guys who are like, you know, they they might have a couple of good wins. Then, oh, you're moving stop. Yeah, and then they'll, they'll move the stop loss because they don't want to have another, they don't want to have a loss yeah. and take away one of the wins. What are you... What's the what's the issues that are going on there? So I think even that is and is 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 understanding, right? Like I don't move my stop until I know this price break break down a price level and continue in its direction, right? Because 
And the other thing, too, is like you have to 100 percent expect price to come back to your entry because in every profitable trade I've ever taken, price comes back to my entry. You just expect it. Don't honk at me. Um, <laughs> sorry. See, psychology wrote it. Um, no, well, actually, it's it's his fault because I'm at a yield sign and I'm yielding. I'm following the law and this guy isn't. But no, um, it's. Um, <sighs> It always comes back to your entry. Yeah. So, yeah, you, and you, I mean, I, I'd say you're right. Like when I, a lot of the trades that I take, often it will come back to my entry. And the, I suppose the question I've got is, why would, why don't you try and enter at the, the, the time that it comes back to your entry? Is that a, is there a sort of way to do that, or is, or do some of them just not come back to the it's, entry? And it's, it's you know, like, here's the thing, like too, there's nothing, nothing's a hundred percent, right? Um, because sometimes, sometimes you can take a. See, I, I, I kind of have my trading kind of defined, right? There's entry types. There's high risk. There's low risk, right? No such thing as risk-free, yeah. right? Because you can have an illiquid market spike and it just wipes everybody out. This price is just searching for liquidity. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Jeez Louise. Oh, um, oh so yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you just got to decide, right? Like you're either going to uh, take the trade on first hit and expect for it to come back. But if you're scalping and you're looking for 10, 20 pips, like, I think my kids can get 10 to 20 pips in their sleep, right? Um, because it, I, anyone any, anyone can be right for any given period of time in trading. But it, you take the risk. You define it. Like, like, I, like I said, I have my entries classified as high risk, slow risk. There's no such thing as a risk-free trade. But as far as moving your stop, I know that I will not move my stop until price effectively breaks down a level, retests it, and okay, I'll move my stop. But if price has not broken down the level, you, you can move your stop prematurely and, and, and get whipped out. And I think that's part that's part of it too is understanding, right? And most people don't really realize is if you understand price from a non biased perspective, you know what to expect. You can manage your expectations in your own head. Uh... Right? And this is how I've gained my own knowledge of, the, of, of myself in trading psychology is if I can reverse engineer the market, I can understand what to expect, right? Yeah. And it's with anything, right? You got you to gotta manage your expectations, right? Like even with life, like, like it's like, like in marriage, right? Like I expect my wife to cook. Well, I actually don't. I expect her to not want to cook, right? Because she's human. She has emotions, right? And she expects me to not want to do things sometimes too because we're both human and, and you know, we have emotions, right? It, you manage those things, but people tend to, when their expectations aren't met, they take it the wrong way. But I would say, isn't it your fault for having expectations and expecting something to do what you think it should when it's totally probably not going to do it that way? Yeah, yeah, I I. I hear what you're saying and it's probably the first time it's really occurred to me that if you've got a better understanding, so, you know, a lot of people just trade a system, you know, and just, it goes X, Y, Z, do this, do that, do this. And not really, I suppose when you've got a better understanding of why price, or why your system's failing or failed, or why that trade has failed, then you're less likely to, to move your stop. Um, or in your case, uh, if you've got a better understanding of how price actually moves, then you'll definitely know when even you could even get out at a smaller loss because you know there's a higher probability if you know this happens, then my stop is most likely going to be hit because my setup has failed, and more often than not, it's signifying that price is not going to go in the direction I picked, which is the unbiased view of having yeah on the unbiased view of looking at at price in the market right. is that is that a good way to I put would it say, yeah right just have no bias the market knows what it's going to do you just got to wait for the signs yeah yeah so i think i think i'm with you there so so it's, it's a partly partly understanding partly i suppose looking at yourself yeah looking well, yeah and i and i suppose that, that that's the hard thing is looking at People struggle to look at themselves, I think. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who struggle with trading struggle to look at themselves and understand why it is that they can't get it to work. 
Um, and look, you know, even even yesterday when I I took a trade I shouldn't have taken. There's no way I should have taken it. I just had two good wins, taking me a while to get there. News hit, and I took a trade, which, like, yeah, it sort of half made my, you know, match my system, but it was right in the middle of news. It was There was no need for me to take mm-hmm. it. As soon as I took it and price started going against me, I literally had a feeling in my body of, you know, it was it was some chemicals, some emotional chemicals, going around my body, so I physically felt, you know, stressed, physically felt stressed, I could feel it, it was almost like a tingling, how is it, how is it that before that, and look, I don't expect you to know the answer, but before that, after the two trades that were profitable, how is it that I went in and just destroyed it and essentially got myself on a complete, let me ask you this, did you know the news was coming out? Okay, yeah, so, I knew so, the news so was coming out. I saw it hit, and then I cool. entered. So that's a factor, right? Because that, that's one element you can control. You can control what you're aware of, right? Now, yeah. the, the trade that you took, was it with or against your system? It was It was just with it. What but do you mean? No, what, no, 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 say it was, what do you mean by just with well, it? Well, yeah, so it was... It, so it was. It was. Uh, it it had shown some signs that. I mean, basically, I entered too early. Yeah. It and hadn't. There, there, there it goes. hadn't closed. There it goes. Yeah. Right? There's not a complicated answer to yeah. anything. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that, there you go. And when they don't line up, you just don't take the trade, right? I yeah. Keep it yeah. Super. I'm a, I'm a fan of keeping everything simple, right? Like you know you know one thing that's even helped me. I don't know if it it will help uh, the, the listeners too is um as a kid um i remember me and my dad uh we were walking uh we were walking back from the store and um i used to be a classic overthinker classic overthinker right and and the one person i would talk to and vent about that is my dad Uh, and this should make me make sense to people he said dre i said what he goes can you control any of this that happened i said no he goes then why do you care I said, oh, shit, dad, you're right, right? And and and, and then from then I started, pro- like, it just, it's you have these light bulb moments, right? But you still got to work at it, right? And then I started, um, I started practicing that too, looking at it. Can I control this? No, I can't. And that's, the, that's another thing too, uh, is another thing that people don't do what they want to do and don't say what they want to say. It's because they, they care about what other people are going to say and how they're going to feel about it, right? I don't care how my mother, mm. my father, my brother, my sisters, my cousins, anyone, my wife, her family, I don't care if they like me or not. All I'm going to do is I'm going to be me. You like me, you like me. You don't like me, you don't like me. I can't control that. And I think another thing, too, that's helped me throughout even life in general is there was this uh, teacher in uh, – high school and for for people in the uk it's college right i was going through something really tough and she said she i don't know she was really intuitive she looked at me she said andrea said yes miss star she said don't let anyone live in your head that doesn't pay rent there i was like holy shit you're right <laughs> and the market's the same thing like i don't even let the market live in my head Market doesn't well the market does pay my bills but it it's nothing for you to get emotional about because you're not the one you're not the ones dealing and doing all that right like you can't let the market live in your head because essentially it's not paying any rent there in some cases it's taking your money right like quit sweating yeah. it and i'm very get over it and move on right so yeah now what about uh holding holding trades for longer periods of time or yeah even even maybe not longer periods of time even just you know I suppose uh, it's that fear of losing, I, I suppose, what it comes too, like, down to when I think about it. The, 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 the longer the hold the trade, the longer the wait for the trade to happen. Right? And, again, this is non-biased information based off of everything that I've seen, everything that I've back tested, everything. Yeah. If, if you're looking to hold, if you're, <laughs> these longer-term trades are planned, right? Like this, like this. Like I'm, I was short New Zealand, uh, JP. I, I'm in a lot of positions. I'm super short Euro too. 
But all that was like, dude, it took like six months for Pipes to get to, to get to my level, right? So guess what all I have right. to do? Yeah, wait, right? And in between time, there's 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 trades in between those times, right? But for the most part, that major trade that I wanted to take, I'm waiting for, right? And you're not comfortable waiting. This is probably not the best. Sorry. And I think you said it's probably not the business for you. Cutting out here with, no, <laughs> with the reception. That was all I said. Um, yeah, that's what I thought you said. Um, hey, look, Andre, brilliant. This has been superb. I think there's a lot of nuggets in here that the guys can um, go in and, and scrape out. What What else? Is there anything you want to want to leave the listeners you know, with? I think the thoughts are too like. If you're struggling trading, the best thing you can do is get you some backtesting software, right? And this is one of it, it's all about training, right? Uh, like, even emotions are trained. Um, get on the backtester, right? And start trading your strategy. If you start feeling yourself getting emotional over the backtester, you're the problem, right? That's another thing that I mm. did, right? I, you really, you really have to be, you have to have a keen sense of who you are as a person, right? And who you are as a person is probably going to change. And who you are as a trader typically changes too. But even to develop confidence, it's like, like you know me, I consider trading like a sport. Confidence is built through experience. Experience is built through time, right? And typically time is Let's face it, people are in the real world. They have jobs, they have families. I get all that. And at some point, you'll have to make a sacrifice, right? Um, But again, I think, too, just understand how you feel. Define who you are. And, like, I don't think people need to pay for crazy psychology courses and and, and any of that. Like, you don't need super-duper NLPs. And I don't think you need any of that. I think you just need to know who you are and i think the, the 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 biggest problem is people think the market's out to get them right and here's another tool about psychology too that's a selling point for people who sell manipulation courses who can't trade themselves how do you think they came up with it oh the market's out to get me oh if i'm losing other people, like reverse engineering so uh, because people people well, people you know, I'm all over your podcast talking about the market's not manipulated. You'd be in a punk about trading, right? People will email me, yeah. well, you're an idiot. The market's, the market's manipulated. Well, since you know it's manipulated, are you? why are you not winning? Right? Is the manipulator being manipulated? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. But no, um, uh, you really got to take, take a keen look at yourself first. And one of the one of the realizations I've had recently too, Cam, is there's about, I have about seven strategies that are all profitable, right? But I really only connect with two. So guess what I do with the other five? They don't matter, right? And I think, too, once you get out of your own way and you start to experience uh, the, the information on the chart, uh, I think at that point you can you can start to make gains. But remember, trading is... Really, ten percent technical and and ninety percent mental, right? Yeah. So, I will leave the listeners with that. Just really get a keen understanding of yourself. Look at look at your day to day life. See how trading affects it, right? And here's the thing: like sometimes you need a mental break from trading. If you take a losing streak, don't revenge trade. Close your chart, walk away, take a couple days off, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Mentally reset, right? Like your your I don't want to say your emotional state, but the your mind state. Like people do and do and say stupid crap when they're angry, right? I'm I'm sure I, I can attest to that. Like I've been mad before and said some stuff that was really hurtful to some people. And guess what happens? You have to apologize. Sometimes a relationship recovers, sometimes it doesn't, but in trade the mistake is your money. Right? And if you can't afford to lose the money that you lost, one, don't don't trade it. Two, just take a step back. And if you haven't been profitable on a small account, don't deposit more money. Don't deposit more money. Um, 
I'll, yeah, I can go on and on, Cam. So I, I'll cut it oh. there. I'll go. I can go but on yeah, and on. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, look, I mean, it's that's so true. Like, I mean, I you know even we we're talking about this trade yesterday that I was like, oh, you know, I was emotional about when I, the actual dollars. It had nothing to do with the amount. The amount was like smaller when i think i spent the same amount in the in mcdonald's that evening um <laughs> on, on the way to this concert so if not oh, a pretty even even more i spent it concert. oh the concert was amazing yeah like we went to saw queen it was phenomenal um probably the one of the best concerts i've been to not that i've been to a lot but nice. the, the light show and, and stuff was amazing can I ask you a question about that? Why you were at Queen was trading even a part of your thought process? Did that lose Sorry. your trade map because you were doing something? <laughs> Sorry, you sounded like, like a, a robot. Like, that's, that's you're, Zoom for you. Yeah, like you're in sl- That's Zoom for you sometimes. Yeah. You, but when you were at the concert. Yeah, you sound like you're in. It's like, yeah, sorry. When I was at the concert, was trading even a fact? No, because. Um, I mean, I had the 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 robot I had running was uh, no, sorry, yeah, on the bus I checked the current position mm-hmm. I had uh, had placed, and then I'd seen that it had broken the the level that I didn't want it to mm-hmm. break, and so I exited at a small mm-hmm. loss, not my stop loss, at a small nice. loss, and so I was out, I was flat on the manual trading, the robot trading. That had like a, a bunch of runners that were were in profit, and then I my daughter wanted my phone <laughs> to do some because all the other kids had we had three kids there all the other kids had a phone she wanted the phone she was sat about four people away from me so I gave her the phone she ended up filming I think the entire concert oh, on the phone. Cool. Um, by the time I got it back, it was like uh, I, I did check the positions and they'd all gone into into drawdown. Um, and then by the end of the concert, I checked it again, and like it was, it was, it was coming back from the drawdown. The drawdown was getting mm-hmm. smaller, and I woke up this morning, and it was all in profit, and that it, it all closed. Nice. And um, yeah, so that was so. So yeah, was it a factor during the concert? No, I didn't yeah. even think about it. I didn't even think so, about it. Yeah, do was, something, you know, and, that, and I think that's kind of, kind of the thing too. Like when you're away from the charts, you're not a trader. I don't, I don't check MetaTrader from my phone. I don't even check my bank accounts from my phone because it doesn't matter, right? Like be in, be who you are in that moment. When you're at the charts, you're a trader. If you're not at the charts, be, be cam, right? That's like, like I'm not trading right now, right? I'm, I'm literally sitting outside my kid's school. I'm dad right now, right? Um, yeah. Not a trader. I'm not going to even look at the charts, right? Just be, be in that moment. And, and the ironic thing about that too is trading is very what's happening right now. Right. The market is very much what's happening in the here and now. It's like the ultimate metaphor. It's just the strangest thing. But like, yeah, don't you don't have to wear the trader hat all day long. And I think, too, that's that's another thing that, that limits a lot of people is they I want to wear the trader hat because you want it so bad. and You do have to work at it, but you still have to take a break. from. It. You got to take that hat off. Right. And sometimes you just got to be yeah. him. Um, and that's another tool of practice. Be in the moment. Right. Like literally be in the moment. And yeah, if you're not trading, you're not a trader. That moment. It, it's funny because it was. It's, I almost. I sort of said that to myself before this interview. Uh, you know, I often have quite a, some quite good ideas on the toilet for whatever reason. Hey, same, same like, here, man. I do my best thinking on the toilet. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I I think I need to re. It's, it's almost like I need to reinvent my life because it's. It's almost like the the time outside of being on the charts is the time that I haven't given any atten- attention to for so many years. Mm-hmm. But I think that's the problem because, and that's why I'll that's why I tend to over trade. Um, and you know, like even market coming to a close, it's like oh that that's a setup, but it's you know forty minutes until the market closes for the day or or restarts on the forex and i know it's not not a good time to get in Mm -hmm. but that's my setup i didn't get in and yeah price went to the target but it was the good the right thing to do and i was like yep that's me i've got to reinvent it's almost like you've got to reinvent your life to be like a non-normal person where when you're working you know i suppose what's it it's 
I suppose it's not when you're working. It's just you're, you're working such a smaller amount of time, but you're still gaining the, yeah, still being productive. It's complete. It, that's it. It's the oxymoron, yeah. isn't it? It's you, you're literally doing nothing is working. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Doing nothing exactly. is working. And then, the, and then you, uh, sorry, I just no, want to say, and then it. the other thing is, and then when you're, when you're actually doing the work, it's unproductive, mm-hmm. if you know yeah. what I mean. So, like, if you're doing back testing, or if you're, um, uh, you know, analysing the market, it's unproductive. There's nothing's going to happen out of right. that, right? But that's the productive yep. stuff. That's what is a real screws with me a lot, and has done in the past, and I'm sure it screws with a lot of yeah. others. And I think again, once once people learn how to look at the market without bias, um. And one of my guys that was on the podcast, I'll just go as just some trader, you know, see what's not there. That, that was how it clicked for me is being non-emotional. And it was like, oh, it's right there in front of my face. And, you know, from a psychological standpoint, yeah, you wanted to go out and trade it. But I knew from that point, like I had to work on it and define it a little bit more. But even, even with you, um, I think what you should do, and this is outside looking in, is look at your automated trading versus your manual trading, right? See see which mm-hmm. one's more productive for you. Like the in the it, I think it does come back to understanding, right? And the ego. Who 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 check the ego because I have to do it all the time. But yeah, see what's more productive for you, and you run with that. Like keep it super simple, right? Super duper simple. So that's. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, look, guys, we've gone through an awful lot here on the show. Uh, Andre, thanks for coming back on. My pleasure. Uh, we'll get you on at, at some point in the in the future. Now, um, I know you had like a ton of notes and stuff that yeah, you put together yeah, I forgot about, around psychology. I forgot about that. So, um, I Kobe Bryant's one of my favorite basketball players, and may he rest in peace, and his lovely daughter and everyone else. Like that, that man, that that was crazy, but he inspired me before his death to do this. Right. And I kept asking myself, like, how can I give back in a non, I don't know how to put it, but I have, what, what can I give to the trading community that is, that that's more impactful. And I don't think the answer is the charts. I think the answer is an insight to my brain. Um, and not necessarily my brain. It's just kind of my view on psychology. So um, I put together um, just some notes. It'll have some pretty pictures and all that. <laughs> I'd probably rip from the internet. Um, <laughs> and it's just notes, mental notes on psychology. And here's the other psychological part. If I give it away for free, people won't even care for it. So maybe we just charge like five bucks for it and I'll just, yeah, donate that money off to someone. Um, because again, people don't, people tend to not appreciate what's not free. Um, but yeah, um, I want to, just kind of make it my gift to the market, to the trading community and the markets that have changed my life. So, yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. We'll get that up on the site somewhere, guys. So um, head down to the show notes to find all that. And, uh, yeah, look, thank you once again, Andre, for coming on the show. Guys, I know it's been a bit of a different one. Um, I'm sure next week we'll have probably more of the standard trading, more trading-related questions, less trading psychology. But it is always good because, as Andre said, it's 90% of what you're going to be doing as a trader all right guys thanks andre my pleasure all right guys so there we have an interview with andre stewart done on trading psychology Uh, look it was all over the place you know a bit of road rage in there and a whole bunch of other stuff as well so if you do want to get that document ebook maybe it's going to be a video i don't know what it is i've look i've seen that that the paper version of it uh then i haven't got it yet Maybe it won't be out, so you have to stay tuned, and I'll let you know when it comes out. Uh, but if you want to get your hands on that, make sure you head over to Trading Nuts, subscribe, or head over to the Instagram chat, uh, not chat, the Instagram channel or the Trading Nut chat room. Um, I will be posting up those results on Instagram uh, as they come through for that robot I talked about. And last but not least, remember to check out the new funding page as well, so it's updated Funding providers compared. I think you're going to be finding quite some quite interesting information, more detailed information in there as well. So, guys, enjoy. Hope you have a great trading week, and I'll catch you on the next episode.